Yeah, so it's it's really a, a I'm I'm really very fascinated by uh just the sort of general fact that, you know, when you look at the science when you look at physics and you look at time and physics, it does not seem to have many of the features that it has that they tend to give uh to it in experience. And so our experience of time is very complicated in various ways. But also, apart from the experience, there's this kind of manifest image of time that we find almost ir irresistible. You know, so we find it almost irresistible to divide the universe into a, you know, it's fundamentally different sectors that we call the past, the present, and the future. And we think of the past as really this, you know, um, thing that's happened to all these events, and that there's this really fundamental uh, difference between the two, and it can really affect the way we think about our lives, right? So we, to people, in the, you know, the ordinary person in the street will think that the past is very settled, uh, the future is open, uh, they think the present is that little bit of time in which you can act, uh, you know, sort of freely, and they, you know, you don't think that if I wiggle something now, it'll change where I was born, uh, but you think if I wiggle something now, it might change where I die. Um, and so you, you, there's this kind of massive causal asymmetry as well. And so I'm very interested in, but then if I look into, and so people talk about time flowing, about this kind of special privilege now, which is updating itself. Um, but then when you look into the, uh, the science uh, and the, the physics of time, you don't see a privilege now that you won't find a kind of highlighter saying, this is the now, as opposed to this other moment. Um, there's no, you know, you are here uh, sign on the map. Uh, if you thought of it, the space-time manifold is a big map. There's no you are here uh, thing like you see uh, if, uh, when you you know when you're a tourist in some place look at the map. Um, and there's no flow uh, and uh, and it's it's not obvious exactly where the directionality comes from either. And so I've got a sort of big project of trying to uh, reconcile as best I can the the, the now I mean the, the the sort of manifest image of time with the scientific image of time. Um, I think it's a problem that hasn't been really worked on all that all that much, and so I'm very interested in trying to, you know, sort of piece these two together. Um, and so right now I've been thinking a lot about uh, why we think about why we th why we think that there's a privilege now, uh, but we don't think there's a privilege here, a spatial here. Um, well, why do we think that? Well, if you think about uh, you know, speeds of things, like uh, if, I, if we were actually in the same room, Julian, then you would be, you know, you would see light bouncing off my face and my lips moving, and then there would be the sound coming much later, but your brain would be integrating the two into this, uh, and ma matching them uh, together really quite well. And your brain, in fact, has all sorts of mechanisms and tricks for detecting whether sensory information comes from the same uh, uh, event or not. Uh, sometimes these tricks go awry, and that's how we, we learn about these mechanisms. Uh, but uh, it, we, there's this whole system of uh, temporal integration where we're constantly integrating all this information. And the re end result of it is that I don't need to kind of, I don't need to put a kind of time stamp on when I talk to you. If I talk to you about something that's in our immediate uh, uh, lo you know, location, and I say, you know, look at that chair, it's orange, or something like that. In the lag time it takes for our brains to process that and the communication, um, most macroscopic properties will stay the same uh, through that interval. And that's, in fact, due to these temporal integration mechanisms, plus the speed of, sight, uh, the speed of uh, light and, and, uh, and uh, sound, and how quickly these things work. As opposed to, you know, if you were to try to communicate uh, by smell, you know, the, if you walk into a house and you uh, smell burnt toast, it doesn't give you a very reliable indication of, you know, when it exactly happened. And so the end result of this is that if you look at those features, and then you also add some physics and the fact that, uh, you know, there's no time travel, uh, or it doesn't seem like there's any time travel, so I can't go to you. So with space travel, I can go back and forth along any axis. And so I could. So if you say you're here is is uh, special, well then I could go. You know, will it take a 
a long time, but I could take a, take a plane and get to Oxford and see you're here and say, well, it's it's nice here in Oxford, but it's uh, but it's uh, you know not metaphysically special in some way. Um, and you could do the same in, about San Diego, but we can't do that about other. We can't travel to other you know distant points in the past, and so or any points in the past, and so you've got all these people going around with these heads. Uh, taking into account, not needing to st stamp any kind of uh, date stamp uh, on things. We don't need to synchronize watches when we're talking to each other. And so it's quite natural for us to come up with this idea of a uh, uh, distinguished now. There'll be massive interest, you know, the relativity of simultaneity won't be, isn't, uh, you know, observable in ordinary context. Um, and uh, so it's quite natural uh, in a, such a world for us to have a lot of vast intersubjective agreement about these sort of local pat what I call pat present patches and since there is this wide intersubjective agreement it's natural for us to think that there's this kind of objective difference between the two uh, I mean objective difference between the past and the future um, and so I'm trying to do my best to try to explain these things but um, one thing I'm curious about Julian is uh, one thing I want to work on and have worked on to some extent is uh, I, so I'm trying to get uh, reproduce our way of thinking about you know, why why we might be misled into thinking that there's this kind of completely objective past, present, and future.